Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. We were supposed to talk about the perimeter and the area of similar figures today, but I thought instead we'd talk about Ashton Kutcher. Well, maybe we'll relate Ashton Kutcher to math. Maybe that'd work. Here's a nice picture of Ashton Kutcher. Here's another one. And the second one you can see is significantly bigger than the first. But his features all seem to be in the same proportion. It's, it's not distorted. It's a clear, good picture of uh, Ashton Kutcher, just like the first one. And in fact, all I did was take the first picture and make the height twice as great and the width twice as great. So I grew the first picture proportionately and ended up with the second picture. Well, what if I grew the picture disproportionately? In this picture, I didn't increase the height, but I doubled the width. And you can see it looks weird. He doesn't look the same. And you can see that the height is the same as the first picture, but the width is a lot wider than the first picture. How about this one? Oh, well, that's weird too. And you probably guess what I did. I kept the width the same as the first picture, but I doubled the height. I stretched him out from top to bottom, and that made him disproportional, and that picture is not similar to the original picture. Well, just like pictures of Ashton Kutcher, we can apply proportionality and similarity to math. Here's a picture of a triangle. And here's a picture of another triangle, and it looks just like the first triangle, except as in the pictures of Ashton Kutcher, I doubled the width and doubled the height. But when I do that, the second triangle still looks just like the first triangle. And in fact, the width of the second triangle is twice the width of the first triangle, and the height of the second triangle is twice the height of the, of the first triangle. So they are similar. Well, here's another triangle, but it doesn't look similar. In this triangle, I kept the height the same, but I doubled the width. And the results are the height of the triangle is the same, but the width is different. So this triangle is not similar to this triangle. And on this one, I kept the width the same and doubled the height. So this triangle didn't grow proportionally from this triangle. I stretched it from top to bottom, but I didn't increase the width. Well, let's put some numbers to this and see how the math works. Here's a triangle. We're going to call it triangle A. Here's another triangle. and We're going to call it triangle B. Now there's a couple of things you can notice. First of all, for both triangles, the angles haven't changed. All the angles in each of these triangles are identical to the, the corresponding angle in the other triangle. Here's another thing you can notice. The sides have all increased. The 8 inches has become 12 inches. The 14.4 inches has become 21.6 inches. Well, I wonder how much they increased. I wonder how much they grew. Well, let's look at, at the base first. 18 inches divided by 12 inches. 18 divided by 12 is 1.5. So, if I multiply 1.5 times 12, I get 18 inches. 18 is 150% the size of 12. How about the height? If I divide 12 inches by 8 inches, I also get 1.5. How about the hypotenuse? If I divide 21.6 inches by 14.4 inches, I also get 1.5. The triangle has grown by a factor of 1.5.
Well, here's two triangles. The one on the upper left is the original triangle, and the one on the bottom right is a, a, a triangle that I increased the size of. But just like the disproportional uh, increases in the picture of Ashton Kutcher, this triangle is not increased in size similarly to the, the triangle in the upper left-hand corner. And we can show that mathematically. If I take the base of this triangle and divide it by the base of this triangle, I, can, I get 1.5. In other words, this increased by 150% to get to 18 inches. But if I try the height of the triangle, which is 8 inches and 8 inches, if I, model, if I divide 8 inches by 8 inches, I get 1. So the height was not increased by the same amount as the width. And the same is true for the hypotenuse. 19.7 divided by 14.4 equals 1.37. So all the sizes, sides were increased by different amounts, and these triangles are not similar. Oh, here's another trick. You'll see that the angle, they're both right triangles, and of course the, the right angle is 90 degrees, but the other angles have changed. So if it's a disproportional growth, if they're not similar triangles, then the sides won't grow by the same amount, and the angles will change. They won't be the same. Well, let's take it a step further. These are our two proportional triangles, and you can see they've all got the same ratio of growth for the sides, 1.5. Well, if each of the sides are going to grow by 150% or by a factor of 1.5, what would happen to the perimeter? Wouldn't you think that the perimeter would also grow by that same ratio of 1.5? Well, let's check it out. The perimeter of triangle A, which is the one I've labeled A here, the perimeter of A equals 34.4 inches. The perimeter of triangle B equals 51.6 inches. What do you think the ratio of 51.6 to 34.4 would be? How about 1.5? Each of the sides increased by 1.5. So the whole perimeter is going to increase by a factor of 1.5. Well, that worked out well. Now let's try the area. If all the sides increase by a factor of 1.5, how much is the area going to increase? Well, let's figure it out. The area of triangle A is 48 square inches. The area of triangle B is 108 square inches. So what's the ratio of 108 square inches to 48 square inches? 108 divided by 48 equals 2.25. But wait! Our factor was 1.5. Our factor of growth was 1.5, but our area grew by 2.25. Is that something that's messed up or is that the way it's supposed to be? Well, that's the way it's supposed to be and I'll show you why. In the perimeter we had inches. In the area we have square inches as our unit. 108 square inches is the area of B and 48 square inches is the area of A. So hopefully it will make sense to you that if I take the growth factor for the sides and I square it, 1.5 times 1.5, I'll get 2.25, which is the growth factor for, for similar triangles and their area. So the perimeter will increase by the growth factor of the sides and the area will increase by the square of the growth factor for the sides. Now this will probably make sense to you and won't surprise you. If I have dissimilar triangles or if I have dissimilar growth then my perimeter and my area won't grow proportionately either. 
Now, on these are the two dissimilar triangles, and the growth factors were all over the place, 1.5, 1, and 1.37. And when I do the area, I get 34.4 for A, and I get 45.7 for B, and that ratio is 1.33. And 1.33 doesn't relate to any of those growth factors for the sides. And when I do the area, I get 48 square inches and 72 square inches. And 72 divided by 48 is 1.5. But 1.5 is not the square of 1.33. And it's not the square of any of those numbers. So you can see that with, with disproportionate triangles, with unsimilar triangles, the area is not going to grow in any kind of predictable fashion. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Rectangle B, which I've not shown, is similar to the rectangle shown, rectangle A. The height of rectangle B is 15 inches. What is the perimeter of rectangle B? Well, we know that this second triangle, excuse me, the second rectangle, B, has a height of 15 inches. And we know that rectangle A has a height of 5 inches. And we know that they're similar triangles. So the height is going to grow proportionately, and the width is going to grow proportionately. Well, what's the proportion of growth? Well, the perimeter of A is 5 inches plus there's another 5 inches over here, plus 10 inches, plus the top's also 10 inches. So the perimeter is 30 inches. And we know that the ratio of growth is 3. Height of B was 15 inches. If I divide that by the height of A, which is 5 inches, I get 15 divided by 5, or 3. So I know that my sides increase by a factor of 3. And I know that if they're similar rectangles, the perimeter will also increase by a factor of 3. So the perimeter of rectangle B is going to be 3 times the perimeter of rectangle A, or 90 inches. This is basically the same problem as the last one, except we're going to work with area. Rectangle B is similar to rectangle A. The width of rectangle B is 20 inches. What is the area of rectangle B? Well, let's think about that. I know that the width of rectangle B, the one that's not shown, is 20 inches. And I know that the width of rectangle A is 10 inches. So the growth factor was 2. 2 times 10 equals 20. And I know that in similar rectangles, the area is going to grow by the square of the growth factor for the sides. Well, I know, and I just figured out that the growth factor for the sides was 2, and I know that the square of 2 is 4. So if I knew the area of A and multiplied it times 4, I'd have the area of rectangle B. The area of A equals 5 inches times 10 inches, 5 times 10, which is 50 square inches. Again, the ratio of the widths is the 20 inches that we're told rectangle B has for a width divided by the 10 inches that we can see is the width of, of rectangle A, and 20 divided by 10 equals 2. And so the area of B is going to equal 2 squared times the area of A, or 4 times 50, or 200 square inches. Perimeter and area of similar figures. I hope you understand this a lot better now. Let's find out how much better you do understand it. Go to mastermath.info and download the worksheet on perimeter and area of similar figures. 
try your skill there, and then go back to Master Math and try the quiz on perimeter and area of similar figures. And be sure to come back and see us again soon.